All right, in lesson number six, uh, we're continuing to look at electric fields. And actually today, um, we're basically going to look at, um, in the same way as we did with Coulomb's law, how we started with, you know, kind of relatively straightforward, one-dimensional um, charge distributions. And then we went to something a little bit more challenging. We're going to do that t today. The same as, as kind of we, we've done before. We start simple. And now today, which is our second lesson on electric fields, we're going to look at something a little bit more challenging. So basically, today's lesson is one example. And it's one example of um, a charge distribution that's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so we have a charge Q1, 7 microcoulombs, and it's located at the origin, okay? And a charge Q2, which is minus 5 microcoulombs, and it's located on the x-axis, 0 0.3 meters from the origin. Find the electric field at point P that's up on the y-axis. Okay, so basically here's a little sketch of our... Um, problem. Okay, so here's charge Q1. It's at the origin. Here's charge Q2. It's over here. And we want to find the electric field at this point P, which is <clears throat> located up here on the y-axis with an intercept of 0 0.4. Okay, and so what we want to do in the same way as we've done with most other uh, electric field problems is that we're going to pretend that there's a test charge here at at point P, and we're going to do a free body diagram of that positive test charge. Okay, so here are the two charges down here that are responsible for the electric field at this point. And so let's draw first to start a free body diagram of the test charge that's at point P. Because we have to remember, when we're doing an electric field, there actually is no charge here, so we just pretend that there's a positive test charge there. And so this is what it would look like. Okay. Because a test charge is always positive, right, the electric field from Q would, would be repulsive because a positive test charge would see a positive charge down here and would be repelled. So the electric field would be in the upwards direction. Because Q2 is negative, a positive test charge sitting here at point P, it would, there would be an attraction, and so the electric field at that point would be down in this way. Okay. Now, one thing that we're going to have to do, obviously, is that we're going to have to resolve this electric field, E2, into its X and Y components. Um, E1 is almost entirely, is, is certainly entirely in, in the uh, J-hat direction. So um, we can calculate the magnitudes of each of these, and then we can resolve um, this right here. And we'll have to do a little bit of work to find this angle, um, but that's no problem. So here it is right here. So just using the dimensions of the problem, we can, we can find that this angle in here is 37 degrees. Okay. So continuing on then, let's find the magnitude, um, and the direction is straightforward, for the electric field due to charge 1 here. Okay. Well, we know that for any point particle, this is what the electric charge, this is what the charge looks like, this is what the field looks like, kq1 divided by r squared. We know it's in the j-hat direction because we've already said, oh yeah, okay, this would be a repulsion, so it's going to be directed upwards, so it's positive j-hat. We can sub in the numbers that we were given, and we get 3.94 times 10 to the fifth newtons per coulomb positive j-hat. Okay. Our next step then is to find the magnitude of E2, and then we're going to resolve it. Okay, so here it is. Again, for any charge, for any electric field, for any electric field from a point charge, we get kq2 over r2 squared. And when we sub in our values, we get 1.8 times 10 to the fifth newtons per coulomb. Now you'll notice here I was able to include the direction right away because it was very straightforward. Here I found the magnitude first. And now I'm going to take this value and I'm going to resolve it into its x and y. Okay, so a little bit more room here. So here's E2. And of course, the X component would be sine 37. The Y component would be cos 37, if you just look at the geometry of the triangle that I've drawn. This is a negative value, right, because the vertical component is in the downwards direction. And so we can simply sub this number in and solve and I get that E2 is equal to 1.08 times 10 to the fifth I hat 
minus 1.44 times 10 to the fifth j hat. And of course, the units of this are newtons per coulomb. So our last step is to find the total electric field at the point P. So we say E sub P. And that's just a combination of E1 and E2. And so I can collect like terms, right? Our J hats are like terms. The I hat's kind of by itself in this case. And I get my final electric field component. Um, and I should probably include some units there. Um, the two questions at the bottom of this note are, of course, um, two homework questions to get us started. Um, find the electric field at each of these points.